When studying parabolas, there are more features that are of interest to us besides just the vertex, which has been our focus uh, to this point. So of course the vertex is going to be the bottommost or the topmost point of the parabola. Um, other points of interest for us or objects of interest for us is an axis of symmetry. So that's going to be the line that cuts our parabola into two identical halves. Um, so if we were to fold the paper along that central axis, the two sides would match up perfectly. Um, and so the vertex is always located on that axis of symmetry. Also of interest to us are the x-intercepts. So those are the places where the graph crosses through the x-axis. And then of interest to us is the y-intercept where the graph crosses whoops, through the y-axis. So depending on how the equation is written, we can identify some of these features uh, more or less easily. So we've studied vertex form, where we can get the vertex pretty easily, but all the other features were a little bit trickier for us to obtain. Um, today we're going to look at standard form of a quadratic function and see how we can pull out some of the information that's necessary for us to be able to sketch our graph. So standard form for a parabola is when we have everything just kind of piled up on one side. So nothing is grouped together in a set of parentheses or anything. We just have our x squared term with whatever coefficient is in front of it. We might have an x term in the equation, and then we might have a number that's being added or subtracted afterwards. But the key is we're definitely going to have an x squared term. We might have these other two. So when we're given an equation that is in this format, we're going to take the following approach to generating the information that we need to sketch the graph. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to find and sketch the line of symmetry. So we're going to have a mini formula that we're going to use to locate where the line of symmetry is. And that's also going to tell us the x-coordinate of our vertex, because then we're going to plug that number into our equation for x to figure out what the y-coordinate of the vertex is, and so we're going to be able to plot that vertex. We're also going to be able to get the y-intercept by just looking at the equation, because that's going to be the value of that c number in the equation, the number that's not connected to any x's. And then, if necessary, we'll use some symmetry or plot some additional points. We might have to plug in a number or two into our equation to finish off the graph to be able to get a good sketch. So that's going to be our approach when using standard form. Line of symmetry, use that to find the vertex, plot the y-intercept, and then plug in a number or two or use some symmetry to finish things out. So let's put those steps into practice with the example in front of us here. So we have f of x equals x squared plus 6x plus 5. So the first thing we want to do, like we listed off, was to find that line of symmetry, the line that's going to cut our graph into two equal parts, run right down the middle that the vertex will be located on. And so the formula we're going to use for that is this x equals negative b over 2a. So if you'll recall, the coefficients are ax squared plus bx plus c. So that's where we're drawing the numbers to plug into this formula. So we're going to have x equals negative b. So our b value is 6. So I'm going to make it negative 6 over 2 times a. Well, the number in front of the x squared, even though it's not written there, is 1. So it's going to be 2 times 1. So not 0.1, but times 1, you get the idea. So we've got negative 6 divided by 2, or x equals negative 3. So that is our line of symmetry. So on my graph, that means I'm going to put a vertical line at x equals negative 3. So that's going to be the line that's going to cut my parabola into two equal parts. It's also the line on which my vertex is going to be located. And that's the second thing we're going to do. So you can see we have that exact same formula describing the x-coordinate of the vertex. So we've already done that. So we know that the x-coordinate of the vertex is going to be negative 3. So we can go ahead and write that down. The question then is, what's the y-coordinate of the vertex? And the way we generate that is to take that negative 3 and plug it into our function. So we're just going to evaluate this function at, let's try that again, negative 3. So 
we have negative 3 squared since it's x squared, 1x squared, so negative 3 squared plus 6 times negative 3 and then plus 5. So if we keep on going, negative 3 squared, negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9 plus 6 times negative 3 is negative 18 and we still have that plus 5. So now if we finish this off, 9 plus negative 18 is negative 9. Negative 9 plus 5 is going to give us negative 4. So the y coordinate of our vertex is negative 4. So we have the coordinates of our vertex. And so now we can move to our graph where we've already got the x coordinate marked out with that uh, line of symmetry. So I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm going to put in a dot right there. So there's our vertex. Moving forward, got the y-intercept. So remember that's the c value of the equation, which is the number that's being added or subtracted at the back end that does not have an x attached to it. And so that is 5 in this case. So our y-intercept is 5. So I'm going to go to the y-axis, and I'm going to go up to 5 on the y-axis. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and I'm going to put a dot there. So I know my graph goes through that location. I can see that my parabola is going to open upwards, and I could have predicted that from the very beginning because the number in front of the x-squared, that coefficient was positive. The a coefficient was positive. If that number had been negative, my parabola would be opening down. So I just need to get at least one more point on the other side of the graph so I can get this width accurate. And that's where step four here comes in. Sometimes we might need to plug a number in to get a little bit more information, but in this case, since I know that this y-intercept is three units over from the line of symmetry at that height of five, I know that I'm going to have a matching point on the other side of the line of symmetry. So I can go over one, two, three, from that line of symmetry and put in a dot on that side as well. And so now this gives me enough to get a decent sketch of our parabola. Now there are some features here that we haven't uh, located, so we don't know the exact locations of those x-intercepts uh, in particular. We'll deal with those in some future lessons. But for now, we've got the vertex, we've got the line of symmetry, we've got the y-intercept, it's a pretty good collection of information about this parabola.